Welcome to your Flame Fundamentals training. Going through the previous modules, we have covered ingest, editorial, transitions and grading in Flame. We'll now look at different aspects of VFX. Starting with this module, you'll primarily focus on the effects tools in the sequence. To get you warmed up, you'll learn about the Timeline Effects Pipeline, Applying Timeline Effects, the various controls and the render indications. When you create any VFX or grading in the sequence, everything is driven by a dedicated series of processes which we call the Timeline Effects Pipeline. In fact, whether you build layered composites in the timeline or build VFX using node-based compositing, you are pretty much using the same tools everywhere in Flame. Obviously, depending on what you're doing, some tasks are easier in a layered sequence and others are better suited to a nodal schematic. But the huge advantage is that you're never locked into one style of working. You could start off in the sequence with the timeline effects and this can be expanded into a node-based schematic using either batch effects in the sequence or batch as a separate compositing environment in Flame. This allows your results to be fast, consistent and high quality throughout the application. You choose how you work. The Timeline Effects Pipeline is also optimized to give you instant feedback without the constant need to render, which is super useful when working on looming deadlines. To add a Timeline Effects to a segment, select it first and then click on the Effects button. In the Video Effects window, you have a range of Timeline Effects to choose from. There are Source Timeline Effects and Segment Timeline Effects. For the most part, you'll be using Segment Timeline Effects for a lot of your work. Say for instance, you choose the Blur Timeline Effects and now you can blur the image. So it's really easy to add a Timeline Effects to a segment. Looking at the menus above the sequence, this top section represents the Timeline Effects Pipeline for the selected segment. Reading it from left to right, you start off with the Source Media, its Format and Pre-processing options, any Timeline Effects and an eventual output. This display of the Linear Pipeline also acts as a navigational tool to update the Effects ribbon as you select the various components. Let's call up the Video Effects window again and add a 2D Transform Timeline Effects. So there are two Timeline Effects applied to this shot and I'll shrink the shot for this example. Reading the Timeline Effects Pipeline, the segment is blurred first and scaled second. Even though this pipeline is linear, you can still pick up the Timeline Effects and rearrange them for a completely different result. You can also mute Timeline Effects by clicking the blue LED and you can also delete them by either using the Context menu or gesturally dragging the specific Timeline Effects to the bottom of the screen. The only Timeline Effects you can't remove is the Comp Timeline Effects at the end of the pipeline. This is required for layer compositing in the sequence. We'll have a detailed look at the Comp Timeline Effects in the later videos. With any Timeline Effects, you have access to its Effects ribbon below the Timeline Effects Pipeline. Simply select your Timeline Effects and controls will appear. So you can make quick adjustments to specific Timeline Effects without going into the Effects environment and the view shows the combined result of the Timeline Effects and layers in the sequence. If you want to access every parameter of the Timeline Effects for a much higher degree of manipulation, you can switch to the Effects environment. Either double click on the Timeline Effects or click the Effects Environment tab at the bottom of the screen. This gives you all the Timeline Effects controls and the Timeline Effects Pipeline is also visible. So you could add more Timeline Effects in the Effects environment. 
but you can also navigate the timeline effects without having to return to the timeline environment. There is also shot navigation via the storyboard reel, but you can hide that if you want more space. Please note that when working with the timeline effects in the effects environment, you normally see the accumulated result of each timeline effects. Selecting the first timeline effects, which is 2D Transform, you will see the transformations as the first timeline effects result. Selecting the second timeline effects in the timeline effects pipeline, which is Blur, will show you the combined result of the 2D Transform and Blur as the second timeline effects result. You do not see sequence layers when using the result view. If you wish to have the same viewing behaviour as the timeline environment, switch the view into one of the context views and you can see the combined result of the storyboard, layers or primary track. Other than being aware of the viewing options, take your time and you should become very familiar with the different timeline effects. We'll look at a few of them in more detail later. To get back to the sequence, click either the Exit button or the Timeline Environment tab and the sequence is already updated with what was done. When any effect has been applied to a segment in the sequence, a white line will appear at the top of the segment. This means the effect has not been rendered. If you are in the effects environment and looking at the storyboard reel, the same shot will also have the white line at the top of the thumbnail. In either case, you can still see the result and you may be able to play it back in real time. In fact, it's not compulsory to render the segments in the sequence before exporting. Flame will simply export what it shows in the player. However, if there is a performance issue or you want to create rendered frames, you click the Render button and Flame creates the rendered media in your media folder. Now interestingly enough, you get a black line on the segment and in the Timeline Effects pipeline telling you the effect is rendered. However, by default, Flame only renders the combined result of the last Timeline Effects in the Timeline Effects pipeline, which in this case is the Blur Timeline Effects. Secondly, you only need to render the topmost layer in the sequence and not every layer that makes up the layered composite. This is a huge time and space saver as you work in the sequence. If for any reason you need to get rid of a render, just go to the Media Options using the Context menu and flush the selected segment's rendered media. Another means of rendering is Cache on Playback. This occurs when you enable the option via the Viewer Options pull-down menu and you start scrubbing or playing the sequence. As the positioner moves over the frames, it will start caching the unrendered frames. A black dotted line will appear in the segment and this indicates a partially rendered effect. The partial render could refer to just one frame under the positioner or multiple frames in the segment. As you continue to scrub or play the segment, Flame will render the frames under the positioner. When the line is solid black, the whole segment is rendered as before. You can also render partially cached segments and Flame will only render the remaining frames. So you can use one or both methods as you render in the sequence. But like I said earlier, rendering is not required for exporting, so you choose how you want to work. An additional way to applying timeline effects to your sequence is to use gap segments. Other applications might refer to this as an adjustment layer effect. To create a gap segment, create a new video track above the edit or use an existing track. Even though the track appears empty, you can select the empty area or gap segment. The gap segment can be sliced or even trimmed to a specific length. From there, you can add timeline effects to it in the usual way. Using this method, the timeline effects is separated from the edit on the underlying video tracks. 
You could use the gap effect to apply a title across multiple shots. Or you could apply a grade across a region of the edit. This is a different workflow to working on singular shots. But it can allow you to grade the edit overall… While still adjusting the editorial underneath. So more flexibility to you… In determining how to approach the VFX and grading in your sequence. Please move on to the next video… And don't forget to like and subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.